system. Um, so, okay, the, the demonstration I wanted to do today was a, a VQE using QStatePack. Uh, so I've adopted these materials from the Google um, Docs as well as uh, some of our uh, Google Quantum uh, documents. So the example that we want to run here is a randomizing Hamiltonian on a square grid. So this is a notorious uh, NP-complete problem where what we're going to have as our interactions are uh, random ZZ interactions between qubits on a square grid and uh, a random uh, transverse field. Uh, all of these uh, J and H values will be set to plus or minus one, uh, just to simplify things within our calculation. So first thing we're going to do is import uh, cert QSIM circ, time copying uh, random. Let's see if this runs. All right, well, let's just continue. So the first thing that I have uh, prepared, and uh, I think what we'll do is I'll just make this notebook available to everyone. And once you're able to spin up a GPU uh, on your own on Perlmutter, you can uh, go through the tutorial yourself and uh, do this for yourself. So I have several helper functions here that are predefined. Uh, this is just going to generate uh, random terms on a square grid, and then uh, a random instance for my H and J terms. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is prepare a plus state, uh, and we're going to use a VQ, uh, QAOA type onsets where uh, we prepare, uh, the all plus state. And then the way that we're going to evolve, uh, our onsets is just to encode, uh, the terms of the Hamiltonian in this kind of simple trotterized manner. Uh, and then we're going to add a mixing term, uh, that will consist of, uh, just simple X rotations on every qubit. So here I'm preparing the, the, the plus layer. Uh, this is what the circuit will look like for a square grid of a two by two square grid, each atomards on every qubit. I'm going to define this uh, rotate x layer. This is my mixing term for this QAOA type on sets. Uh, this is what this is going to look like. Uh, so a partial rotation, partial x rotation on every qubit. We're going to have a z layer. This is the first, this is the transverse field on our uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, so eventually we're going to parameterize this. Uh, if we define the circuit, then it looks something like this, uh, the Z uh, rotation of a, a specified angle on every qubit. And then finally, uh, we'll apply this entangling layer, which is a, a, basically a ZZ gate uh, varying strength. So uh, these three ingredients are going to parameterize our onsets. And the idea here is we're going to uh, parameterize our circuit and then attempt to find uh, the energy, the, the parameterization that gives us the lowest energy. So we'll put it all together to generate the onsets. So for this example, uh, I will have run a five by five um, qubit grid. So this is going to be a 25 qubit simulation. Uh, what this will look like is this kind of messy looking um, uh, grid of uh, operations all across my five by five grid. <clears throat> So, okay, it looks like my kernel is actually dying. Okay, that's fine. So for uh, this onset, um, we're going to put all, all of these uh, layers together. So I'll prepare the plus layer and then do my Z rotation. I'll do my entangling layer, and then I'll do my mixing uh, term. So random X uh, or parameterized X rotation on every qubit. <clears throat> So here I'm going to define my two simulators. So in the first instance, uh, I have my circ, my default circ simulator as a backend, and then I'm going to have my QQuantum enabled GPU simulator. So I'll set my number of GPUs equal to one. Uh, and so for this, um, so first I'll run the default simulator with 100 shots, and I've you can see I've pre-run this uh, previously, and the CPU runtime gives me uh, about six seconds. Now, if I swap out the backend for the Kube Quantum backend, um, my GP runtime is a fraction of a second now at this point. So in this instance, it was 0.9 seconds, but uh, uh, earlier in the day, it was uh, around 0.03 seconds. 
So, okay, so you can already see that there's like a significant improvement in uh, the computation time from several seconds to a fraction of a second. But really where this uh, capability starts to shine is uh, you have to remember that this is only one instance of the VQE iteration. So really we want to iterate over the circuit, do this many times and uh, optimize our parameters in order to find what the lowest energy state uh, uh, on sides will be. So I'm going to define a couple of other um, helper functions here. These will just uh, help me uh, calculate the energy expectation for this type of Hamiltonian. It's pretty trivially easy, uh, given a bit string, to calculate uh, the, the energy expectation, just because we have a diagonal Hamiltonian. And then I'll have this other, uh, uh, other function here that helps me um, uh, calculate the expectation value. So putting it all together for uh, this single instance, single circuit of my VQE, then I can calculate uh, the expectation value of my Hamiltonian for one instance of this iteration. <clears throat> all right, so now let's parameterize the onsets and we'll actually iterate over uh, various parameters in order to minimize the energy. So uh, in order to do this, we'll import SymPy and then we'll symbolically uh, parameterize each of um, uh, our parameterizations of our circuit. So recall that we had three layers that um, uh, could be parameterized, our X rotation layer, our Z rotation layer, as well as our entangling layer. So we'll encode all of these as uh, alpha, beta, and gamma parameters. So I'm rebuilding my circuit now with uh, uh, these parameters symbolically. And then I'm going to sweep over each of these parameters uh, with a sweep size of 10. So now I have, um, uh, in this sweep, I have a thousand circuits that I have to iterate over. So now you can start to see where having a hundred X improvement in your simulation time really starts to shine. <clears throat> so here for this optimization, we're just gonna do a brute force optimization. We're just going to uh, brute force over every possible um, uh, combination of our three parameters. Obviously there's, uh, smarter, more sophisticated uh, methods of optimizing over the space. Uh, but for the purposes of uh, this simple demonstration, we're just going to do brute force. <clears throat> um, so just by doing a back of the envelope calculation using the CPU simulator, um, before it took six seconds to do uh, a single iteration of uh, this entire VQE circuit. So six times uh, 1,000... Um, circuits that you'll have to run to uh, uh, explore the entire parameter space, that takes you to about an hour and a half of compute time. But using Ku Quantum as your backend, uh, you're running about 100 times faster. This actually will run in about 30 seconds on a single GPU. So really, really significant uh, performance gains that take your simulation time from something that you would have to wait an hour and a half for to something where you could literally sit in front of uh, your terminal and wait for your uh, results to come back. So really, really helps uh, streamline your workflow and accelerate uh, the types of com uh, computations that you want to do for a large number of qubits. Uh, reminder, this is a 25 qubit uh, simulation. <clears throat> OK, so uh, those were all benchmarks for uh, Ku State Vec. Uh, let's switch over to KuTensorNet now. So I want to just highlight some of the functionality that we've built into uh, these two SDKs. So we actually have a, a function that takes a circ circuit or a Qiskit circuit and converts it into an, uh, an einsum expression. So an einsum expression is just, um, it tells you the order and indices of a tensor network and the order in order to contract them. So this is kind of the form that uh, KuTensorNet ingests uh, and does the contraction of a, a tensor network. <clears throat> so we're going to take the same. Uh, we're going to take the same circuit. Uh, we're going to define a five by five uh, grid. Take the exact same uh, circuit that we were looking at before, um, and then we're going to convert it into a nine sum. So this really just takes one line to do uh, circuit to nine sum. Takes your circuit and then uh, define. Um, spits out an, an einsum expression. So for this simple example, uh, our, uh, our five by five grid, this is something that we can compute with uh, state vector simulation because it's uh, few enough qubits. 
So all we're going to do is a sanity check now uh, and make sure that QTensorNet gives us the same state vector that uh, the default state vector um, uh, simulator will give back. So I've pre-run this, uh, and indeed, QTensorNet runs about a second, and the QSim uh, backend runs in about eight seconds, and it gives us the same state vector. So good um, sanity check here. Uh, but where tensor network methods really excel is when you want to look at um, large uh, systems of qubits. So this is kind of a simple toy example of a five by five um, uh, grid. Let's now look at a bigger system. So a 36 qubit grid. So uh, this takes a massive amount of memory to um, do the state vector calculation. But it turns out uh, we can still get interesting uh, information out of this simulation uh, by using tensor network uh, methods. So we can't get back the full uh, state vector because even just representing the state vector for 36 qubits would take about a terabyte of RAM. But what we can do is we can pick and choose what bit strings, or we can even uh, do a reduced density matrix and still find inf uh, interesting information about the system and simulate it. So for this 36 qubit grid, uh, I've just increased the length of the grid by one. So now we have a six by six grid. I'm going to prepare the same circuit. <clears throat> I'm going to convert my circuit to an ein sum. Uh, and then I'm going to pick a bit string to sample. So I'll, I'll pick the all zeros bit string. Uh, and then I'll do the contraction. And then what QTensorNet will do is do the contraction and then give me back a probability amplitude. So uh, I'm get, uh, what's shown here is the Einstein expression. This is literally just the list of indices that uh, QTensorNet will contract over. And it tells me for the all zero bit string, I get this uh, probability amplitude and probability. So that's great. Uh, we've now done a computation of uh, 36 qubits. I've also done 49 qubits, the same thing. And you can get back uh, uh, some interesting information about your system. Uh, I'll do one final uh, uh, demonstration of the capabilities of QTensorNet, uh, where we're going to uh, compute the reduced density matrix. So what we can do here is pick what qubits we want to trace over and get the reduced density matrix of. Uh, we can actually um, do a conditional density matrix as well, where uh, we can look at if you want to pick and choose certain qubits to be assigned 0 or 1. Uh, you can trace over that as well. Uh, QTensorNet will do the contraction. And then, so in this instance, I will do a reduced density matrix of the first four qubits, where I fix the first two qubits to the one value. So we're doing a conditional den uh, reduced density matrix. Uh, and so, yeah, Q QTensorNet will just um, uh, spit out the reduced density matrix as uh, this gigantic uh, array. Uh, so yeah, what I'll do is, uh, yeah, maybe Neil, you can let me know where's a good place to put this tutorial and then, uh, y'all can play around, um, and look at the, uh, Ku Quantum yourselves. So that's basically all I want to show. And, uh, it's a little bit of a shame that I couldn't, uh, run this on a GPU live, but I think hopefully with just a walkthrough of this notebook, uh, everyone here got kind of the gist of uh, the capabilities of Ku Quantum and uh, uh, how to actually use it in practice.